Mining is obviously a very profitable business in Elite Dangerous, but Void Opals is not the only way you can make a very healthy amount of money from mining. So today we're going to talk about Double Pay Night Hotspot Mining. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Downtwith Astronomy. So, Dual hotspot mining has been around for quite a while and I figured I would do an advanced miner's guide. This means we are going to go into quite a bit of detail. We're going to talk about first about the equipment you'll need, then we'll talk about how uh, you locate a good spot to mine. And then later on I'm going to give you some tips and tricks that hopefully are going to make the process a little bit easier for you when you're out there in the rings collecting materials. But before we do all that, I just quickly want to remind you guys that the merch store has received an overhaul. There's a lot of new really, really cool designs over there. So there's a link in the description. So please, if you are like, go over, have a look and well, maybe there's something you like. So outfitting. I have my gold digger here, which is the build I'm using for painite mining. This is not going to be a build guide. I'm going to do a separate build guide on this. We're just going to use this as a talking platform to talk about the modules and equipment you'll need to do this properly. Now, Painite mining, we're not going to do any core hunting, we're not going to do any surface or subsurface deposits, so we will only need, in terms of hard point, mining lasers. You can see here I fitted mining lances, very, very useful if you have access to them, it gives you extended range, but if you don't have mining lances, um, I recommend that you fit just medium-sized mining lasers and fit as many as your power distributor can handle. So try it out, like four pips to, uh, to weapons and see if you can keep uh, uh, keep it stable for at least a few minutes um, with the number of lasers. So try it out depending on the build. Um, when it comes to selecting ships, I should probably say you should go for something with as many internal compartments as possible um, and as big internal compartments as possible. So something like a cutter is a good choice and a conda can work uh, okay as well. Um, type 9, type 10. If you want smaller ships, then maybe a python, a crate if you like the, that kind of maneuverability or even smaller, you can go around with a cobra or stuff like that. But at least for weapons here, just mining lances if you have them, otherwise um, small or medium sized mining lasers and as many as your um, weapon capacitor can, uh, can handle. And then you can fit additional weapons if you want to be able to, uh, to handle pirates in case they come um, and interdict you. Then we of course have the, um, and the utility mount, nothing special need here, I just fitted extra shields and a heat sink. So nothing here, you can do whatever you like. Um, corn tunnels, nothing special here either. Um, again, get some jump range. We will need to jump around as we'll see in a bit. Um, other than that, just standard. Try to um, to lightweight as much as you can uh, to get some jump range out of the ship. But of course, it is when we get to the optional tunnels that things begin to get uh, more interesting. And I'll start here from the bottom and work my way up. It's often the way it makes the most sense to me. So first of all, of course, we'll need a detailed service scanner so we can actually locate the um, the hotspots. You can switch this out once you've scanned your target ring you want to be mining in. Um, but I would often just keep it on. It's a class one slot anyway. All ships have them now, so you don't really get a lot out of that anyway. But if you have a really tight build, you can just go scan the ring, go back to our station and fit this for something else. But I would definitely recommend that you try to fit a detail service scanner into your build. Then you'll need a prospecting lipid controller. You don't need a 3 class 3. If you have access, if you can get it, it's a good... Um, it's a rec I recommend you to try to get it if you can. Having two um, prospectors really helps a lot, so you can prospect rocks around you a lot quicker. It's important you get A-rated. It's very, very important. The higher the rate, the higher the letter here, the more fragments you will get, the more money you will make. So this is your money maker. Do fit an A-rate. Fit a, either... I would either recommend a 1A or a 3A. You don't come in class 2. Um, you can like swap around here with the refinery. I mean, in this case, I have access to put a three and a, a four A refinery in. You can go all the way down to a, maybe a two A refinery. That's just fine. Remember, we're only going to be mining painite and painite only, so you don't really need the bins from a four A. It is kind of going to act like an extra cargo hold for you. They could store stuff there in the in the hubbles, but or the bins, not the hubbles. You can store the bins in the refinery. Um, but I would, if I didn't have the options here, I would rather downgrade the refinery to a class 2 um, or even lower, if, if, if oh, do I even go lower? 2A maybe, and then get the uh, the 3A prospector. So there's a bit of, of moving stuff around here depending on what you have. But of course, if you have a class 4 slot as I have here on the cutter, then by all means go with the, with the larger refinery. Um, then on the cutter, some uh, specific modules here. I have some, uh, some shield reinforcement that's not really uh, just because it's military compartments. 
Um, then you will of course need some uh, some collector limpage controllers, as many collectors as you can possibly cram into the build. It's always a balance between having collectors and cargo, um, but try to get as many collectors in as you can. 9, 10, 11, 12, that kind of area, I feel like that's the sweet spot. So again, you really need a lot of collectors, so try to get as many collector limpage controllers in here as you can. Um, then of course you'll need some cargo. And obviously, the more cargo, uh, the better to a certain degree. I mean, um, I have a 512 tons of cargo. It takes me uh, just over two hours, I think, to uh, to fill up a ship like that. So if you are efficient when you're mining, you have lots of collectors, you have good mining lasers, you can probably expect to be mining like 200, 250 tons per hour. So try to gauge that depending on how long how long you like to stay in the belt. If you like really, really long sessions, then maybe you can go down on the collector limit to get more cargo. But if you prefer shorter um, sessions out in the ring, maybe just an hour, you can go and get lower cargo and then more collectors in order to be more efficient in that hour. But again, then you would also have to, um, to go back to the station, which also takes time. So it's really try to optimize this to be able to, you, so you can fill it up in what you would normally have as a mining session. So it's a little bit depending on your, on your, uh, on your play style. Well, that's pretty much all there is for the uh, for the equipment. As I said, there will be a build guide for this specific ship coming out um, later on. But for now, I think it's time that we head over and we talk about how you can actually locate a good spot to mine in. So what we're looking for here are two painite hotspots that are overlapping, meaning that the two hotspots can have an area they share. And in those areas, you will find a very, very healthy amount of painite. Now, these types of hotspots in the right type of rings and all that stuff, they don't come easy to find those everywhere. Luckily, the guys over on the uh, Elite Miners subreddit have done an amazing work and located a few of them. And they are now available here in the um, um, in the Elite Miners tool. I'll link to this in the uh, description. You can go to the site here. Now, it's quite simple. You can type in your, uh, your reference system and then you just click Pay Night. What it will do then is it will list all the known hotspots where we have overlapping hotspots where you can do this type of mining. Um, I've been using this uh, in the Hydra sector here, but you can pretty much go to any of these. It's really up to you. Um, you can see here, you could, if you typed in your current location, you can see the distance from your current location here. And it also shows you the best, the closest cell location where you can easily get a, get a hold of your material sold again. And you also see the distance from your mining location to your cell station. Um, so I've been using this because of the short range to this. But I do recommend that you come back and have a look at this every time you go out and mine. Because remember, prices change. So this is a good cell location right now. Doesn't mean it's a good cell location in the future. So do come back from time to time and ensure that you have your good cell locations close by. Otherwise, you might want to consider to relocating to one of the other hotspots. So in my case, of course, I'm just going to be clicking here to copy paste it. I'm going to jump back into the game and um, then we're going to head over to the planet. and I'm going to show you where you want to drop into the ring. So here we are at the planet. And as you can see here, the ring has already been scanned because I've obviously been here before. What I, what I recommend you do is you go over to the panel here and you locate um, the, one of the painite hotspots and you try to fly to it and check if it is close to another hotspot. You can see we have one here and we have one right here. So these two are obviously overlapping. There's an area in between these two where both of them are uh, covering that area. So what you would do in this case is simply just drop down in a random location um, somewhere in between the two. I like to drop down in very dense locations where the rocks are tightly packed. So I would go for a lighter area like this stripe right here. And then I'll just let the ship drop into, uh, into the ring. So there's a lot of tips and tricks that I've picked up over the years that's going to make this type of mining a lot more efficient. And I want to share some of them with you today. Now, first of all, when we're looking at the number of prospectors are brought in this case because i have so many collector limpet controllers i brought a full cargo hold of uh, of limpets you can just jettison them if you have too many um, and make sure you have them on the ignore list we're going to go over that in uh, in a second you can see this spot is slowly heading into the dark side of the planet here so it's getting a little difficult to see what's going on so do remember that of course you have your, uh, your night vision which can uh, can help you in situations like this so for firing groups, make sure you have a. Uh, I recommend you have a group with your um, with your mining lasers uh, and your prospector, like the one I have here. 
and then also have one with your mining lasers on the same trigger and the collector. Um, and then I have one for my, my weapons and I have one for scanners. What I would do when I were prospecting is I would take of course the prospecting and mining laser one and I would begin just prospecting the rocks as um, as I fly and I recommend that you always fly towards the planet. Um, we should open our cargo hold as well. So always fly towards the planet. You shoot at one rock and then you begin to align you up with the next one. And then you shoot at that and you wait for the response from the first one. So this one had 26% painite, which is actually pretty low. So I'm going to ignore that. So we're going to shoot off the next one. And while that's flying, we're going to target the next rock and fire that off and wait for the response from the first one. So here we have 39% uh, painite and, uh, um, and a little bit of osmium, which is pretty good. I would I would probably take that. Um, I often would go for something 40% ish and higher uh, is something I would uh, I would consider mining. Anything lower than that, I often just skip. Let's see what we get here. Now, another thing to uh, to consider also is the number of materials in the rock itself. You can see here, for instance, we have just two painite and osmium. Where on this one we have three materials. Now, if you come across a rock with only whoops with only one or two. Um, you can be pretty sure that pretty much every single fragment you get out of that rock will contain those two materials. A fragment can contain up to two materials, sometimes one, sometimes two, um, but they will never contain three. I've never seen that at least. So in a case with a rock like this, where did the collector go? If one of these were painite and it was still right at the border around the 40%, I should take into consideration that the fragments coming out of that rock here, only if there were painite, only uh, two out of three of the fragments will actually contain um, will actually contain painite. So if there are three materials, I can try to like divide it by three and multiply it by two in my head, kind of get a ballpark area because that's the effective percentage I'm gonna get per fragment. So, so do keep in mind if they have three materials, you should probably want to go for slightly higher um, um, percentages before mining it. If if this rock up here, for instance, had a third material, I wouldn't mine it since it only has two. I'm getting a little bit extra then uh, then i would definitely mine it now this rock here is um, is nice and round so that's not a big uh, big deal we don't have to worry too much about our limpets destroying themselves on the rock but there is more you can do than just um uh, than just shooting at any spot on the on the rock now i have four lasers and they well, you can see here when i begin firing they're mining at very different spots but notice that all the fragments here are all coming from the same laser. Um, it seems a little random which one it is, but they will all come from the same point. I believe it's just whatever hit it first. Oh yeah, that's a good point. I completely forgot to mention that. Your pips. <laughs> you should put four pips to weapons and two pips to engines. Um, systems only put pips over there in case you manage to fly into something or you are getting attacked. So now I should be able to mine here just, just nicely. Now, also note that I'm mining here on the kind of on the downwards facing face of the asteroid and look where my fragments are going. My fragments are going downwards. So if we take a side view of a situation like this, the rocks, the fragments will always come out moving directly away from the center of the rock. So when I'm mining on the lower half of the rock, that means that the rocks are being shot downwards and towards me. So it'll be shot underneath my ship. Of course, making it a lot easier for my collector limpets to collect um, the fragments. A good trick here when launching a lot of uh, collectors at once is just to hold in the trigger and you can see it will launch the limpets in a very rapid succession. But you can see here now because I was mining here in the lower half of, uh, of the asteroid, pretty much all my fragments are located right here um, in front of me. You can see all the fragments right here um, in a nice pile. So the trip for my uh, collectors are very short compared to if they were located here above the ship, they would have to fly up there and fly all the way down and come in again. And I could move even closer if I want. But notice, again, all ships has an approach corridor to the cargo hatch. So the limpets, you can see it here, they don't fly directly to the cargo hatch. They kind of fly to an um, invisible point somewhere below um, the ship. They fly towards the ship, then they go down towards that point below the cargo hatch, and then they fly straight up towards the cargo hatch. The length of that approach corridor differs from different types of ships. But keep that in mind that it's not always just to have the, all the fragments just clumped together right next to your cargo hold um, because the limpets will go for, for that approach corridor.
Okay, so here's an interesting rock. You can see here it has a very, very healthy amount of painite in it, and definitely something I want to um, I want to mine. However, as you can also see, it is spinning rather quickly, and it has a quite irregular shape. So you need to make sure that you approach these types of rock um, correctly, otherwise you're going to lose your collector limpets. Mm -hmm. If I were to just fly up to the rock um, and begin mining at it uh, right here. You can see when I'm mining down these valleys that would spawn fragments down there and then one of these uh, peaks will come and my limpets will be dead. And that's obviously we don't want that. I mean, we do have a lot of limpets, but we don't have enough that we can just throw them away. You can see now this peaks are coming down. So if I had fragments in this area here, they would first of all be, be pushed away and scattered all over the place. Or in some cases they will clip into the rock and they will be stuck inside and your limpets will just fly and suicide themselves in the rock. Um, or in best case, they're just going to be pushed away and they're going to be all over the place and it's going to take forever for you to collect them and you're going to lose your collectors. So what you want to do in order to mine a rock like this efficiently is to find its axis of rotation. So basically, I want to mine on the surface along the axis around which it is rotating. So it's just about flying around and have a look at it, see if you can find that axis. And to me, it looks uh, like around here. So you can see it now I'm looking at it either top or the bottom of it um, as it rotates. Um, and you can kind of gaze it by just looking at your where your lasers are pointing. Um, because if the lasers are not moving across the surface, you can see if I begin mining here and I sit still. You can see my two central lasers here, they are almost not moving. They're moving very slowly at least. You can see that one, the right laser, that's not moving. So that's pretty much the center of that... Um, of that axis of the rotation axis right there so you can see now my two laces in the middle they are not moving across the surface and the two others are drawing a circle around that point that's the perfect spot that's exactly where you want to mine now my collectors are dead that's why i want you to have in the same fire group i can keep mining as a switch over to the other group and then i can launch my collectors anyway so you can see here as long as I'm mining here on the um, along the axis of rotation, I'm not going to have any issues with the rock tumbling over or destroying my limpets. And it's not going to be pushing my fragments away. They're all going to be bunched up. Oh, it's done. Um, they're all going to be bunched up nice and uh, nice uh, and closely packed together, as you can see here on my radar. So once I'm done, I can... Uh, oh, I can't go home. You can, uh, I can move in closer to uh, to make it a little bit easier for my, uh, my collectors to go and, uh, and pick them up. So the final question I need to answer, of course, is how much money can you make doing this? Well, on the trips that I've been doing, um, from undocking to when I docked and sold again, I've been able to make around 150 to 200 million per hour. Um, I've seen people claim and they were able to get more, and some people might be. Um, but I guess it's around the same area as what you could do if you get uh, an experienced voidable miner in a, in a good hotspot. But again, this type of mining is a lot less um, skill-based. Uh, it's a lot more, I would say, more consistent. There's less RNG in this. Um, at least the runs I've been doing have been very, very consistent. Um, so I would say this is more of a, it's more relaxed. It's less, less uh, engaging than, uh, than voidable mining. But again, uh, the outcome of it is, is approximately the same. So it really depends. If you want the extra channels, then go voidable mining. If you just want to relax, watch some Netflix and collect some money, then uh, this type of mining is definitely for you. And final thing before we end, guys, remember if you want more info on mining and money making in Elite, build guides for ships, then go down and hit the subscribe button. Built for this specific ship is going to come out in the very near future, so stick around for that. And if you want to have it really, really early, you should hit the bell icon. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you liked the video, if you did, give it a like, and I'll see you next time. I'll see you guys in space.